Hello, my name is Ryan Sloan for The Gear Cage and welcome to episode two in our Building Your Home Studio series. Uh, today we're going to continue to build our foundation here by talking about racks and desks. This might not be a sexy topic, but you know, I don't know. I actually enjoy looking at all the various options out there. So let's get started. Now these videos are a little bit more in depth. So if you do want all the information, watch the whole video. But if you want the too long didn't read version, you can actually click on that using the titles below on the video. Uh, and in fact, you can even do that to look at the various sections to watch the sections that interest you the most. And as always, if you do have any questions, you can always email me directly at hello at thegearcage.com. Now, where do you even begin here? I think it's important to remember what we talked about in episode one, uh, planning for what you want to do. If you're going to primarily use an audio interface and not much other gear, you don't need to have 20 rack spaces available that are going to sit empty. Conversely, if you have a ton of outboard gear, you may want to build racks into your desks or specifically use a sidecar or a collection of racks to suit your needs and your workflow. Let's take a look at the main types of desks out there. The first one is the console desk. This type of desk is going to be just what it sounds like. It's going to hold some type of analog console out there be it an SSL, a Neve, a Trident, or others, uh, or maybe a control style sur uh, console surface like an Avid C24 or Avid S6 or something along those lines. Generally, these are a bit bigger and a lot of times they'll have some racks built in or potentially a monitor bridge. A monitor bridge allows you to put a computer monitor or two, as well as potentially some studio monitors on the top section of the desk while storing rack gear in the rack sections below. Okay, now let's look at a workstation desk. These generally won't have a console on them, but they may have a small mixer or a MIDI controller or you know an 88 key, um, just piano like a motif or something like that from Yamaha. Um, they're typically going to have some kind of uh, bridge on them. So you'll be able to put your studio monitors on them. You'll be able to put a monitor up there and then you'll be able to put gear in the rack spaces below. These can vary in size quite a bit actually. One of my favorite large scale workstation desks is the Argosy Dual 15 Studio Workstation. But this thing is absolutely huge so you'll need a decent size room to justify it. My personal favorite workstation style desk is the Argosy Halo line. They're not drastically different compared to the Dual 15, but it's just a nice modular setup. You can see the uh, Halo Ultimate workstation does have ISO acoustics pieces on the racks. So you have that for monitors and you even can get a video monitor arm on the top center of the desk. So really all around great desk if you're a pro or wanting just a solid desk in the studio, this is a really good option to go with. It is a little bit more expensive, but I think worth it because it is the hub of your studio. Now, having a standing desk was important for me in this space. Otherwise, I probably would have gone with these particular models personally. Now, let's not leave out other companies, though. In the home studio workstation space, there are a lot of great companies. Let's look at some of the other workstation desks at amazing price points from other manufacturers. The Zaior desks score high marks with me because they look cool. The Misa line gives you a lot of options. You can add a rack bridge to this series. Uh, and a pull-out keyboard tray for a full 88 key piano as well. Their Miza 88 XL Flex workstation is a sweet spot for what you get for the price. One of the best things is there's no shipping cost on Zayar products, so you pay the price that you see. That's not the case with most other studio furniture uh, companies out there. What if you don't want to spend a fortune? 
That's all right, you've still got amazing options out there in workstation desks. The RAB or RAB Audio Pro Rack LS840 is a relatively new product, but it's a massive, massive value. It's built out of solid materials and is functional at the same time. It still has a completely pro look too, and at $399 right now, it fits a real sweet spot in the market if you don't want to drop $1,000 or more on a studio desk. So this is probably my all around choice if you want to get a sub $500 studio desk. I also have to mention some classic studio desks that have been around for a long time, like the OnStage WS7600 workstation desk. Uh, it, it's such a great way to get started for less than $300, and it typically does ship free from all your major uh, audio companies out there. Okay, now let's talk about a standard studio desk. These are really just standard desks but maybe a bit longer and without a rack or bridge built in. They may still have a place for a keyboard. Uh, the RAB or RAB Pro Rack 88NB comes to mind here. It's really simple, but effective and also at a great price once again. I was really close to going with an Argosy Halo workstation as I mentioned above. I really like all the options that it provided and the general aesthetic but because I might be working 10 hours some days, or more, I wanted the ability to have a motorized standing large format desk. For that reason, I decided to go with uplift desks. They offer a ton of options from the size of the work surface, to the color, to the composition of the wood, but they also had cool options for monitor arms, power distribution, cable routing, all at a reasonable price. I also like the ability to raise the desk or frame it in a specific way for future gear cage channel shots. Which desk should you buy? Well, I mean, that's a hard question, but let's do our best job trying to answer it here. Buy the best desk that you can afford and will fit in budget now. Buy a desk that won't pigeonhole you in the future. Don't buy a desk that takes up a huge portion of your room. If you only have a few pieces of recording gear, but plan to add a lot later, buy a desk that maybe has a built-in rack. Uh, and conversely, if you plan to only ever use an audio interface to record, as probably the bulk of people do, plan for that as well. You don't need 30 rack spaces if you're only ever gonna use two or three. Also, all of the desks I mentioned are really pretty great quality wise overall. But be sure not to buy gear or buy one that's too cheap and will fall apart over time. I'm not saying you have to get a solid wood desk from a company like Sound Construction, but try to look at all the reviews if it's a, you know, if there's a cheaper option out there to make sure people are having a good experience with it. Okay. So last thoughts on desks. If you're wanting to build your average home studio, the RAB Audio, Zaor, or OnStage desks are going to take care of you without spending a ton of money. If you want to upgrade your level of fanciness, check out the Argosy stuff and some of the Zaor stuff as well. I really like the Halo series from Argosy. It's, it's the bomb. If you want to go off the beaten path like me, I've definitely enjoyed this uplift desk so far. It's exceeded my expectations. Uh, do you have a favorite desk brand? I'm sure some of you are going to mention the output desk. Put that in the comments below so people can see what desks you like. And of course, if you do have any questions, let us know. There are a ton of different rack options out there. You can get a rack with wheels, a rack without wheels, racks made out of wood, racks made out of particle board, racks with nothing but a metal frame, racks that have tons of spaces, racks that are small. This is feeling like a Dr. Seuss book. Uh, racks that face forward, racks that face up. There are seriously so many options. And that's good for us studio people though, because you've got options that will fit basically every situation. I actually decided to use an existing live rack I had in the studio. In fact, I bought a new one that will be uh, installed here probably by the time the next video goes live um, to give me a total of 32RU. 
of rack space. And an RU is um, a rack unit, just in case you weren't familiar with that term. And gear that you'll put in the rack, uh, your typical like Apollo is a one unit or one RU device. Larger devices like, like my Black Lion um, 500 series chassis, that's a 3U, meaning it takes up three rack units. At any rate, these racks uh, that I'm using for my studio are Gator G Tour series racks or cases. They're very rugged and they have wheels. I also like the look in the space. Um, it's got a lot of space with 16 rack units. Uh, I was actually very close to getting a rolling face-up rack that could go under the desk and I may add one in the future for mastering gear, but I, I decided for the time being that having two large racks off to the side of the desk was my best option. I'm going to put links in the notes below to my personal favorite racks. These are my top five favorite studio racks. Uh, number one is kind of shared by two models though. It's the Argosy Rack and Roll L10 and the Rack and Roll H10. Uh, they're classy, they're simple, they're built well. They each have 10 rack spaces. So you do have to be careful not to, you know, over plan because it's not a huge rack, but it's got enough space to fit, you know, most gear that people will have. Uh, also, you know, it's, it's nice to buy not one, but two of these. So you can put one on either side, especially if they're on the floor under your desk. So you can just pull them out and easily work there. Uh, number two is the Argosy Spire 7142. If you wanna have something that looks amazing and is a one and done purchase, you can get the Spire 7142. This is a side-by-side -side rack configuration that gets you 28U of rack space, so you can go nuts with all the outboard gear that you have at that point. For good measure, you can also add an onstage WSR 7500B. This guy is less than $200 and will get you 12U of rack space and even has wheels. And uh, as a bonus, it has a nice tabletop you can work on. So it's a really great deal. If budget is a primary concern, this is probably my number one go-to product. Number four is the Gator G Tour rack. It's also functional. It has legit casters on it, and it's made of wood and even comes with a front and back lid if you ever need to move it or potentially transport it. These are a great rack for the money as well, and you have a ton of variety and options to choose from in terms of sizes from I think about 10U all the way up to the 16U. So I think 10, 12, 14, and 16U are the various options. Number five is the Hosa. RMT-152. I have to put this one on here. This thing is only $133. There isn't much to it, but it gets the job done. Uh, would I put 15 or 20 or $30,000 worth of gear in it? Maybe not, but an interface and a power conditioner and maybe, maybe a compressor or EQ or something. Yeah, it's gonna be fine. It's gonna hold it all day long. It's gonna be secure and it's gonna be safe and you're not spending a ton of money. All right, here's the too long didn't read version of this video. Okay, buy a desk that works for you today and tomorrow. Buy the most desk that you can reasonably afford now. You really only want to do this one time. Don't get too hung up on rack space because you can always add it later. There are a billion options out there for racks. If a MIDI controller or piano is going to be at the center of your studio, be absolutely sure to get the drawer up front if you want to work on it at the desk. And the most important thing is to make sure that it will fit before you buy the desk. Sounds you know, like a common sense thing, but you never know. Uh, the main types of desks you'll see out there are console desks, workstation desks, and flat top style desks. I really like the workstation type with a rack bridge and a place for monitors for most people, but it's okay to go with a desk like the uplift desk, like I did. Uh, I just ended up making the surface larger to fit monitors and buy external racks from Gator 
to make up for it. My favorite workstation desk is the Argosy Halo series. My favorite budget desk is the RAB Audio uh, or RAB Audio LS840. And my favorite keyboard workstation desk is the Zaor Misa or Misa 88XL. And I'll be sure to put links to all of these in the info field. My favorite racks are the Argosy Rack and Roll line and the Gator G Tour line, if you want to be fancy. Um, I also like the Onstage WSR 7500B. I think that that's probably the best value on the market out there when it comes to racks. If you have any questions or comments, you can always email me directly at hello at thegearcage.com. And as long as you don't say anything too weird or crazy, I'll get back with you as fast as I can. What's your favorite desk? Put it in the comments below. I'm Ryan Sloan for The Gear Cage, and we'll be talking to you again soon here. Be sure to check back next Thursday for the video on choosing the computer for your recording studio. Take care, and we'll see you again soon. You bravely let me in. I could wait a million years or more Until you came knocking at my door